Thank you very much for having me here. So uh, I'm going to attempt to answer a very big question. How will AI change software developers? Uh, software development, the software industry. My name is Ixion Ruiz, and the only important thing about this particular slide is that I, oops, I work at different with different organizations like the CDF Foundation, the the um, the CNCF, and I will bring back this conversation into later on. I wish uh, we have a really interesting conversation or at least presentation. So this question is really difficult to answer, like how is going to change? Because one of the things that we are using uh, the word, or one of the problems that we are using the word AI very broadly, and not all AIs are made the same. So right now, today, we have heard two speakers talking about LLMs, well, three speakers talking about LLMs, and also ML, machine learning. So me answering for a whole umbrella of technologies is going to be difficult. And even if you are already choosing a specific LLM, as Elias mentioned, it is important. Um, I, I hope I get it. Okay. Um, uh, it is important that you consider how many parameters this specific model has been trained. So I don't know the answer how it's going to actually be changed in our industry, but I can guarantee you something. It has hijacked all our conversations. There is no team or there is no meeting or there is no planning on the future that doesn't include how we are going to use it or are we going to implement something. So and this is something that we actually try to do at, at, with our customers. Because there is a hype right now, and there is a lot of questions. And one of the questions uh, that they come, or we actually invite them to make, is if they are thinking about this, have they thought about all the other questions that they must answer, like why they are doing it? What is the use case? What are the solutions that they are trying to implement, and for what reason? And honestly, also, AI in our industry is not a matter of if, but also when. And with this kind of media outside, like for example, this is a TED talk from last month with Thomas Domke from the CEO of, of GitHub talking about that everybody, now, everybody today, they can actually become developers. And this is a startup created last year, but this is an update from March 2nd of this year, that this particular startup, Magic, its, its aim is actually create a software developer agent that is capable of developing software without any supervision. They actually, in this update, they are telling us that this is not possible just yet. But that is their goal, at least. So if everybody is a the software developer, can be a software developer, and there will be, at this, in the future, at least in the minds of some people, and a specific agent, is there any future of studying software development? Like, are we already outdated? Should we pack our things and go to the beach because we are retired as of this moment. Well, there is some good news for us. For example, this is from the enrollment and admission application in the US Berkeley College of Computer Data. There was an increase in 48% this year. And even though their admissions didn't change, this shows that there is still a lot of interest to become software developers, or at least to the computer science. So good news for us, or not so good news because we cannot retire as of this moment. And again, we use this label with such a happy, uh, in a, in such without thinking sometimes, or we don't even understand what AI is nowadays. 
So I also re uh, recommend you to listen to Mustafa Suleiman, the CEO of Microsoft, in a uh, talk from last month, talking about what is AI, what is what was the past, by like how we have we been evolving in the last 15 years, uh, a little bit of the classifications of the LLMs. And I like uh, he actually is mentioning that in the last uh, one and a half years, we have passed uh, LLMs models trained on parameters from first tens of millions to billions, and he actually expects the next ones being on trillions. So the amount of information that we are consuming, and it's also interesting that um, one of our speakers was talking about the problem or the issue of synthetic data. That is the next problem in this particular industry, synthetic data and how we're going to get it. And also the provenance, but don't. I will mention that in a little while. So AI is here to stay. We trust that it's going to do a lot of amazing stuff, but there's also a dark side. And honestly, um, this one is a must listen. So uh, Meta had created Cicero to play diplomacy. And it actually reported that Cicero was creating uh, the best um, deals or treaties with the different countries represented or played also inside this game. It turns out that Peter Park uh, went into and created a paper, this actually, this podcast is based on paper, talking about how Cicero actually plaguing France convinced UK to not defend the North Sea, they were going to cover the North Sea. And when UK agree with France that, yes, we are allies, you cover there, I'm going to move my troops down there, Cicero turns around and talks to Germany and says, we can move now. I convince UK that I'm going to protect it. So this, for Peter, was deception like complete deception. So now agents are able to backstab us really nicely. If you want a really uh, funny companion of problems with AI, LLMs, and other kind of uh, technologies, I recommend you to follow this particular site. It has it is updated very frequently, very frequently, from airlines, chatbots, chatbots that were offering discounts that didn't exist, to uh, chatbots joining Facebook pages saying, my child is also attending this particular school. And then it's a bot. How can you claim that his or her child is attending this particular school? Anyway. So, but we already covered. They deceive, they, they lie, they like stop us, they can play even death. Um, on this one, sorry, I forgot to mention that. On this particular podcast, it's also mentioned and a specific uh, genetic algorithm that is actually learning how to play dead when the uh, particular researchers were executing a um, verification on how the replication rate was behaving. And they were actually um, killing those different agents with high replication algorithms. And so the agents learned to literally play that when the tick of the clock happened and that verification was done. So really interesting, I totally suggest you to listen to it. And I'm very happy that you talked about open, open, um, open source language models. And in this particular talk by Heather Merker, she's talking about why we should start using or paying more attention to it. And this is also uh, in the same vein that I wanted to bring to your attention. 
Um, who here knows what S bombs are? S bombs, software build of material. Okay, the software builds of material. Hopefully, the developers in the room knows about it because if they don't know it, I have even worse news that agents that can kill us, stab us, or anything like that. The bad news is, remember GDPR? Yeah? S1 is chapter two. What do I mean by that? So, for example, after so many problems in security in the supply chain, the government and several other institutions are also at the world says, we need to create more transparency in our software. So that's the software bill for material. If for every software that we are creating, we will have a, a ingredient list of how this is created. So S1 started already like two years ago in different parts of the world. It's going to be part of the uh, requirements of any government or any provider to different governments to present this particular software build of material every single time that we make a release. Well, it is so important that we also understand where the elements are coming from, how they are being trained, what data they have acquired, and all these coordinates of how we achieve to that particular model that now there's an idea of creating the AI bomb, the AI builds of materials. Because so right now, it doesn't exist. So right now, we have to trust benchmarks. We have to trust a page saying, this was created maybe like this. Maybe. If that doesn't scare you, I'm very happy to walk in a very dark night with you because apparently that doesn't scare you. Okay, so in the development work, how is that happening? Because I've talked about uh, on the broad side, I've talked about the problem, the scary parts, the hopeful parts, etc., etc. But let's see how they are working or how we are adopting as a software developer. Because at the end of the day, I work with my computer, I write software. So. This is um, a survey created by slash, slash data with more than 10,000 developers. They were asking how is the involvement between AI with, um, with your daily life. And this is important. Even if I call it a tool, and Mustafa Suleiman doesn't call it a tool, he actually calls it as a new species, digital species. So for me, it's still a tool. And as a tool, you can use it several ways. And one of the ways is you only consume it, you use it either for chatbots, you create images or any other assets, or you are actually trying to create or introduce some functionality in your customers' projects or software, or finally, you are actually creating training or, I don't know, polishing the different models. So as you can see, well, one third of the developers that were surveyed, they said that they don't use it in any of these categories, but most of us, we are using it already, even as the consumer side, which is good. Now, this is sort of the three more used ways or tools as a developer that you can have. Like, for example, GitHub with Copilot, and as we said, the CEO of GitHub swears that by using it, everybody can be a software developer. Bold choice of words. Um, IntelliJ IDEA, Jeff Frames is, is also having his companion, which is also LLM with a prompt, and Amazon with Amazon Q developer. And Part of this particular, my session at least, was to bring you into attention the idea of which ones are you using and why are you using those? Do you know how they were trained? And how much are you trusting them? Do you know what questions to ask? And do you know somebody that can answer? 
So, I hope that you found this presentation interesting, and I always open for feedback. There's me, my mom, and you can find me in all those places. Thank you very much. Thank you.